Hey guys, welcome back to this week's pull, or as Josh will always like to say, What are we reading? And this week there are so many big issues coming out, we're actually doing multiple episodes to try and see which, uh, what things you guys are really on the look for. So this episode, as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, is X-Men Grand Design Sega Genesis. Or Second Genesis, I mean, <laughs> by Ed Pisker. I'm here with Josh and Dallas. Hey. Hola. And this issue has been a long time coming. They did X-Men Grand Designs issues one and two back sometime last year. I want to say it was around the time of November. Yeah. Uh, they, they put out two issues called X-Men Grand Design, where basically the Watcher is kind of retelling the history um, in a very kind of cliff notes, shortened, condensed version of the uh, X-Men's lore. And I got to say, this issue has been much anticipated by a lot of people who loved X-Men Grand Design. It was kind of a sneak, uh, a sneak hit, really. And this issue is no different. It's a great little issue. Uh, this kind of covers all the X-Men uh, timelines from the inception of the Hellfire Club to the death of Jean Grey after the Phoenix. So everything in there, it's a pretty big, thick book for $5.99. But, I mean, you get a lot of history in here. And, again, it's, it's much needed because the X-Men, more than probably any other uh, superhero team, series, whatever, is more, no series is as convoluted as the X-Men. So this is a nice kind of linear, expedited version of the history of the X-Men. And I want to actually get Dallas's thoughts on this because I have a feeling he didn't really know what he was getting into reading this. And I'm also going to assume, probably rightly, that you are not well versed on X-Men um, and, and its history. I am not. X-Men is probably one of my least favorite teams, not because bad writing or anything, just because I've never been into them, so I've never read a lot. Um, I agree and disagree with your first points. Uh, history is much needed, especially for someone like me. I have no idea what was going on. That's why I asked if there was something before this I needed to read, because I didn't know what they were talking about some of the times. Now, for a collector, for people that are X-Men fans, I would say this is probably an excellent read. For someone like me, I absolutely hated this issue. Really? I hated really? This issue. It was wow. boring. Okay. It was boring, and I couldn't get through it fast enough. Wow, I did not expect that at all. I expected it. I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect him to say he hated I, it. I hated I don't, it. I, oh, my God. The only reason I, I honestly would have stopped reading this if we weren't reviewing it. That's how bad I, I was born through really? this Really? That's, that's surprising. Because, okay. I think if they would have fleshed it out slightly differently in, in terms of they did the cliff note thing, which was good because I didn't need a full retelling. Right. But it was so broken up and there were these small chunks of dialogue that looked like a kindergartner wrote it because it wasn't like well versed, it was so quick, short, that I didn't really get great writing, that I was like, oh, this thing happens, let's see, oh, okay, they've already moved on to the next. Would it help you to know that this stuff was picked straight out of certain panels of very specific issues? Oh yeah, I, issues? I could tell that it was very specific, like they took very mm -hmm. iconic moments, and they were like, here's this moment, the Watcher's gonna catch us up on what's going on, and you can tell, obviously by the artwork and even the paper feel, it's a very throwback Issue. Yeah, it feels like almost like a newspaper, and yeah, um, which I love. I loved as soon as I opened yeah. it, I literally went, "Wow, I like this!" Because I love when comics do that, and the artwork in it, I love. It's that old school X Men artwork. It's the old school comic artwork in general. So the artwork really pops to me. Um, in terms of not being an X Men fan, I was not entertained. Okay, well, are you Josh? not entertained? I was not. <laughs> uh, as a person who was anticipa anticipating this book because of Grand Design. I love it. I, I, I personally, uh, personally, Ed Pisker is perfect is for this. Persically? Persically. Yeah. Persically. No. It's, like, it's like some reject <laughs> from Greek mythology. Yeah. <laughs> Persically. Yeah. Uh, but he's perfect for doing this. Um, before he did this, he did the hip hop history comic books, which were about the same thing, only but he ran through the history of certain rappers and hip -hop, stuff. Hip hop anonymous? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Give them the <laughs> easy ones. Yeah. Um, so this kind of runs through the history of them, and I think that this is the perfect team that you need because there's a lot of people who want to jump into X-Men, but they just don't know a lot of that history, and you kind of need to know some of that stuff or else you'll get lost reading a lot of the X-Men titles. Yeah. And this is a perfect, quick way to go through it all. I think that you'd probably enjoy this more if you knew what you were getting into. If you read the first two at Grand Designs, and then you kind of get it. It's, it's supposed to be quick. It's supposed to be kind of um, just like a real quick summary through and that's just how he does uh, Ed does all his work and I, I personally think this is great and um, there's a lot of fun moments where you kind of also realize that uh, the 90s cartoon oh, yeah. was pretty on point when it comes to comparing that to the comic books because there's a lot of stuff that happens in this book it that legitimately like, yeah. was the, an episode in the TV show 
So even if you like the animated series, I feel like you should enjoy this. I will say um, where Dallas going had you read the first two issues of Grand Design, especially the first one, I think that is still the best one is the very first issue of, of the first yeah. two Grand Designs. Um, for me, I love this, but I can understand where you're coming from at the same time because I think my least favorite part of X-Men history or mythology is the Hellfire Club. I just, yeah. I have very little interest and, and I don't care about the Hellfire Club. The only thing that ever come out of it that's actually really kind of stuck is um, Emma Frost. I mean, every now and then Sebastian Shaw will come back around, but the Hellfire Club to me is probably the most boring part of X-Men Grand Design. But once they started getting into the Phoenix stuff, and even there a little bit with the Krakoa stuff, I yeah. dug that. But no, I'll give it to you, the um, Hellfire Club stuff I'm not too big on, but as somebody who also collected the old school Marvel Legends, um, Wolverine's little stand display was like diced up Hellfire Club minion dudes. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool to see them. Um, but one thing, again, that you realize, if you watch the X-Men 90s uh, cartoon animated series, how much Gene doesn't seem to give a fuck about Scott, and it seems to be very in keeping here. It's like, I wonder when reading back in the day, if people were reading this, you know, as the new issues were coming out, and going, you know, I feel bad for Scott. He just loves this girl, and he just wants to, like, dote on her and protect her, and she just wants no part of it. Uh, poor Scott. Uh, <laughs> So, I don't know, but it, otherwise, uh, I think it's very in keeping with the first two X-Men Grand Design books, and I actually love that it's like a continuation because, again, if you're looking to jump on a book, this is a very uh, creative and interesting way to get people caught up so they can start reading the new X-Men titles. You know, we always talk about, oh, you know, where's a good jumping on point? Get the first three issues of X-Men Grand Design, get the fourth one when it comes out, and I'm going to guess you're going to have a good idea of where the X-Men have been and why you can jump into some of the series that are going on now. One of my other favorite things about X uh, the X-Men Grand Design stories is in the back they always have these like um, footnotes like they kind of tell you where they got uh, what is it like a bibliography works -sided, a yeah. works cited page where they go through each page and they tell you you know little fun facts of like the like first appearances of characters and what issues this part came from and what year this came from because it's also another thing too I noticed with the grand design is they usually try to kind of keep it in continuity like they like um so like say something that they kind of retcon or something they kind of go back they kind of throw that in there sometimes too I noticed that with the last two I think I think I'm going to steal a page from Josh's book. Like, I know that there will be a market for this, obviously, but I'm not that market. <laughs> I like how that's my page. We, we actually we talked about <laughs> it yesterday. Yeah. We mentioned name-dropped you on the podcast yesterday we were uh, on awesome. because yeah. of that exact scenario. Yeah, I think we were talking about and, Supergirl, and we're like, this is just not for yeah. us. Like, I can appreciate what this did. I understand, like, for me, because we uh, we did uh, X-Men The Wedding, the X-Men yeah. Gold, and I was lost on some of that, and I had asked you guys a few questions. So, like, this does help me in certain situations. However, I don't like the way the story un unfolds. Folded. Like that, that's just. I, that's I the love part the that idea that it's, it's Uatu the Watcher, just like, hey, this is. Here's everything that's happened with the X-Men. And it even seems that they're very aware of how ludicrous it is at times in this book. They embrace it. Yeah, and I, and I love that because it is. It's some, of the, some of the stuff that's happened in X-Men mythology is just outrageously yeah. stupid. And um, it's just. It's so out there that it, you have to really love X-Men to go, that was cool, and not go, that was stupid. <laughs> um. But no, I, I think this was a good little issue. I enjoyed it. Um, there's some great artwork in here. I, and uh, yeah, I'll unveil the uh, the rating for this video. I will give this one four out of five sad Scots. Really? Okay, I, I'm going to give it four sad Scots. This is Josh, by the way. Well, you went really to his. Out of five. And then... Oh, no, I, well, you said 4.5. No, I, I said just, four I... out of five. Oh, four out of five. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought you said, you said four really, point five. I was like... I thought you said 4.5. No. Okay, my bad. No, I give it four as well. Four sad Scots. All right, how about you, Dallas? I'm going to go a little lower. I appreciate what it did. I just didn't like the execution. I'm probably going 1.75 sad Scots. Same as Doomsday Clock. I'm actually yeah. 0.25 no, he, higher. I no, did 1.5. We did 1.75. Oh, oh, yeah, we did the same as Doomsday Clock. Yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. Hey, there will be a podcast for Doomsday Clock. Yeah, guys, if you, uh, if, you check, six. if you check today, we'll have multiple videos up today. One for um, Doomsday Clock number six, Action Comics 1001, obviously this one and probably a couple other ones where we break down some of the other ongoing series as well so we really appreciate you guys checking this out if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you are not a subscriber definitely hit that subscribe button comment what you guys thought of x-men grand design and we will check it oh not we will check us out but please check us out on on any of our other videos and tell us what you thought there and we will see you on the next one take care